All right, how's it going guys? This is going to be my review here for the Premium Bandai HGUC Gundam 06 Modrock. And it's a pretty awesome kit. So it's got two different forms. So we're going to first take a look here at the incomplete form and then we'll put the different parts on to make it into the complete form. And if you guys watched the live build of this, you saw that it was a pretty fun build, but pretty straightforward. Nothing really too fancy about it. If you didn't see the live build, you can go back and watch that. If you prefer, it's stored here on my YouTube channel. But maybe wait until after you finish watching the review first. As always, big thank you to SA Gundam Store for their support. If you guys want to check out their available P Bandai kits, then check the link below and you can check everything there on the store and save 10% off everything using the coupon code there, Zacharilius10. So yeah, this is a pretty awesome kit with some really nice design features. I really like the way that this kit was designed, the proportions and some of the details of it. I love like the feet, the chest, the head is really cool looking. It has a very unique style for the head. The arms, especially the side of the arms, is not really so much. That's not really a my preferred design there. But we'll get into it, we'll talk about all the articulation accessories and everything, all of that. But just to give you guys the bottom line straight out the bat, if this is a design that you like, then I would definitely recommend this kit for you. Now let's get into it with the accessories first, shall we? So first off, this kit did come with a couple of marking stickers. You can see the six in the triangle there, there, and there's another one on the alternate shoulder armor. We do also have some foil stickers as well, which I'll show you here. Because the stickers include the little V there on the crotch and then the camera stickers for the front and back of the head there in foil red and then for the eyes you have two different options either in red or in green. I went with red but you can choose green if you want. Now notably there's no stickers on here for these cameras on the backpack underneath the cannons there. It looks like that should be a camera detail there but strangely no foil stickers for that which is kind of odd. But as for hands we just got the two holding hands here and we do have a third hand which is a rifle holding hand here with the trigger finger extended which I've got here on the beam rifle. Also no camera, no uh, sticker for the camera for this one either strangely so if you have any leftover sticker that you might want to use for this, any leftover from some different kit or something, even where you've got a little bit of extra space you can cut out a little sticker out of that. You could stick it onto there if you want but as it is it, if you use foil stickers you might find this kit a little bit for a couple of cameras but the beam rifle is pretty simple I like this kind of weird magazine that's got here it's got like the two different sides there on that the white tip on it is a bit odd it's definitely unique but anyway the design for this rifle is very cool I like that then we've got the shield here which is just a couple of pieces but it feels different this definitely feels like it's a new mold for this particular design of shield which is not a new shield just this regular kind of curved shield has been included with multiple kits but this feels like a new mold of that so it's kind of interesting we have the connection here which is just on a ball joint you can actually connect this either onto the side or the back of the arm like that there you can see one more of those marking stickers there just for the EFSF logo on the front of that. We've got a couple of clear pink beam saber effect parts for the beam saber handles which are stored up here on top of the backpack. And then we have the alternate parts here for making this into the complete version. You have the different set of shoulder armor here and then you also have different parts for the legs. So I'll go ahead and transform that here in a moment, but let's just take a look at the articulation first. So for the backpack, basically these will just rotate up and down like that, so you can rotate those up out of the way. You will have a seam line down the middle of those gray parts there for the cannons, unfortunately. Also on these black parts, you have a seam line down the middle of those parts there on the side. As for the main center part of the backpack, uh, this the center piece is like all one part that you plug in these thruster bells into. And I really wish that this would have been molded in gray instead. Just with this being all black, you kind of lose a lot of that detail there. It's kind of a little bit hard to see. And if that was just a gray piece, I think that would have looked nicer. That said, you could just, of course, paint that part gray in the center just for those vents and the little detail there in the center of the backpack and still keep the outer body of the backpack still in black. Anyway, as for the head, it will move all the way up to there, which is pretty good. You have some little flags in the V-Fund. I haven't removed those quite yet, but of course you can just cut those, shave those down if you want. The head will go down to there. That's pretty nice. You do have a little bit of forward and back movement here in the stomach section, although not terribly too much. And basically just some rotation here at the middle. That's going to be about it. And as I mentioned earlier, I really like the design of the chest here. I have the yellow inside the blue, inside the gray piece here for some really nice color separation here for the molding of the chest. As for the shoulders, those will swing out to the front like that. You have that swinging polycap joint there for those. We're only going to be able to bring the arms up to there about 90 degrees before you're going to be popping that out of the ball joint. The arm will rotate there at the top, but it will also rotate now down here below the elbow joint as well. So you can bend that at a full, pretty much 180 degree bend there with that double joint there at the elbow, which is pretty nice if you have that bent the correct way. The wrists, of course, just on a ball joint there. The front skirt's also on ball joints, but they're connected together. You can clip them apart, though, if you prefer. They'll also move up plenty far out of the way to not interfere with the articulation 
forward of the legs. The side skirts will also move up and down and the back skirt will not move anywhere. It's just fixed as just one big solid piece there on the back as normal for a high grade. Hip joint will rock side to side there. We've got some rotation at the top of the leg. You can bring the leg all the way out to the side and then all the way out to the front forward 90 degrees perpendicular to the body like that. You have a nice double joint here in the knee for a really nice full bend there in the knee as well. That's really cool. Front ankle armor will move up and down there. You can point the toe up all the way to there back all the way to there and then you do have a little bit of side to side movement here as this is just on a ball joint. Now I love the design of the feet here how they just have like this. they come to a flat point at the tip it's just kind of an interesting design of the feet aside from them being just being yellow which is cool the design of them is also just a little bit different than your normal Gundam foot design so I like that. Up underneath the feet you have some nice full detail there as well no hollow spaces to have to fill or anything so that's also good looking very nice. Compared to his ARC 782 brother here is going to be just about the same height in terms of head height obviously though with the cannons on the backpack it's going to be towering over the ARC 782 with those but it's generally going to be the average size for a typical 144 scale Gundam. So as you can see, this kit is pretty cool. It's got some really nice articulation, some nice details around there as well. As for the weapons, it's pretty standard with just the beam sabers, the beam rifle, the shield. That's kind of your just standard Gundam loadout. That said, the addition of the parts to make this into the complete version is what really makes this cool. It really, really gives this just a little bit more in the way of making it worth for you to pay that big P Bandai price tag for it. And while I assume most people are going to want to display this as the complete form, just because of how cool I think it still looks in the incomplete form, I it's the kind of thing that I wouldn't mind getting two of these just to have one in the complete form and one in the incomplete form. Just because I, I do kind of like the incomplete form too, just because that it just kind of has that typical Gundam sort of simplicity, sort of similar to the RX-78 too, how it doesn't have a super a lot of bulk on the legs, the, the shoulders are just kind of simple in that, so, or similar to the Alex I guess too in that way. Now obviously it has a big giant backpack and some good amount of bulk there on the forearms, but still I like the simplicity of the incomplete form as well. But that said, it does just look so cool with the complete form as well. And the color separation on those parts as well, on the shoulders and on the legs, the yellow inset parts and the white parts going with the blue parts, all of that looks really cool. Painting this up is going to be a lot of fun. It's also really minimal on the seams, like on the body there's practically nothing except for basically just a little bit on the head, and it's pretty much just mostly on the backpack the only place you're going to have some major seams to get rid of on this kit. So painting it up should be not too difficult a task by any means, and it should look really cool once it's all painted up. But even if you don't want to, just giving it some panel lining and some top coat, it's got a lot of really nice detail on there to bring out. That's definitely going to look really cool as well. So that's going to be it for the review, guys. Let me know what you think about the kit there down below. I'm really happy with this. It's really cool. Glad we finally got an awesome kit here of the Mud Rock, and it's pretty much exactly what you would want, I think. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, thank you to US Gundam Store, of course, for their support too, and I'll see you guys all next time. Have a good one. Bye, guys.